This series of videos will cover the introduction to organic chemistry. Now on this first video we will look at what organic chemistry is, um, what are the basic structures that form organic chemistry, and um, what are the four classes of organic compounds. Now all types of life are based on carbon compounds so the chemistry of carbon is called organic chemistry and this is due to the carbon's atoms ability to form up to four bonds with other atoms as well as to be able to link up with itself to form chains or ring shaped structures. Organic chemistry was first termed in 1807 by John Jacob Barcellus. Now, Barcellus was interested in cases where there were two different materials that had the same element composition, same number of um, carbons, hydrogens, and what other, whatever other elements were present, but they had different properties. And so the number of carbon compounds can be virtually unlimited, and this is due to what our Barcellus noticed as being isomers. And there's about 100,000 new compounds isolated or synthesized each year with over 4 million naturally or synthetic compounds already existing. And because of this, we're going to need a set series of rules for naming and for identifying the chemical compounds along with being able to predict what would happen in an organic reaction. So to begin with, organic chemicals are all around us. They make up foods and foodstuff, uh, flavorings, fragrances, medicines, polymers, plastics. Uh, they're found in natural products. Uh, they're found in clothing such as nylon. Uh, they're found in pharmaceuticals, uh, adhesive products, packaging, cosmetics, and the list goes on and on. So as we look at this, why are there so many organic compounds? Well, the carbon atoms can link up with each other to form a limitless number of chains. And they can be branched or they can be chains. Uh, that are straight or they can be ring shaped structures and carbon atoms can be arranged in several different ways which creates compounds with different properties and structures and one of those characteristics that we see is called uh, isomerization and so let's look at what exactly an isomer is isomers or organic molecules having the same chemical formula but different structural formulas and because they have those different structural formulas they will have different characteristics now as we look at this right here this right here are two different chemical compounds this one has two this one has three so this in itself would not be an isomer but if we come over and we compare these two you'll notice that this has four carbon compounds and if we count it it has ten hydrogens and we come over here, this one has four carbon compounds and it has ten hydrogens. So their um, formula is the same, but we'll notice that their shapes are different. And because the shapes are different, this is going to make them two different chemical compounds. And so these would be called isomers. Uh, here we have another example. Again, same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, but in this case, the multiple bond has been moved and because the bond is moved they are two different chemical compounds with two different chemical uh, compositions and, and uh, characteristics. And Looking at these two examples these are not isomers they do not have the same number of hydrogens but I did want to show these to you so that you could see what your ringed or aromatic compounds look like now this one is a ring structure and this one is an aromatic and the difference that we see between these is that this one has rotating double single double single bonds all the way around it where this one right here does not have that and we're going to talk more about the difference between our uh, cyclic compounds and our aromatic compounds a little bit later in the series. As we begin to look at the differences between organic and inorganic compounds, the first thing I want you to be aware of is that the basic laws of chemistry are the same for both, both organic and inorganic 
compounds. However, the behavior of organic compounds can differ from inorganic compounds. So I did want to list these and go over these with you. Most organic compounds will not dissolve in water. You do not dissolve in water. Oil does not dissolve in water. Inorganic compounds do dissolve in water, such as salts. Um, organic compounds de decompose very easily uh, by heat. Uh, example, sugar. And if we heat sugar up, how quickly it will melt, as opposed to salt, and salt having a very high melting point. Organic reactions also are very slow. One step in a chemical reaction for organic chemistry may take an hour, where inorganic reactions tend to occur much quicker. Organic reactions are also affected by uh, the conditions of the reaction. Beakers need to be much cleaner. Uh, temperatures. Uh, you want to stay within the accepted temperatures of the lab experiment. Going too high or low will denature or, or mess up the chemical reaction. So they do follow extremely well-known patterns. Additionally, organic compounds are composed of covalent bonds. Now, covalent bonds are formed between two nonmetals, and this consists of sharing electrons. Inorganic compounds are made up of a metal and a nonmetal, and they have ionic bonds where one element gains an electron and the other loses the electron. Also, uh, when we look a couple slides back and we were talking about isomers, organic compounds will form isomers where inorganic compounds rarely form isomers. So starting off with our first organic compounds, we're going to begin with hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are the simplest organic compounds because they are composed of only carbon and hydrogen. Now when we look at hydrocarbons, they can be grouped into three categories. Those that are saturated, meaning they only have single bonds, and these will be alkanes, and then those that are unsaturated, meaning that they have multiple bonds. Uh, if they have double bonds, they're alkenes. If they have triple bonds, they're alkynes. And then if they have a ring or cyclic structure, then we're looking at aromatic compounds. Beginning with the alkanes, alkanes are the simplest organic molecules because they only contain carbon and hydrogen, and they only contain single bonds. Now, these compounds have the maximum number of bonded hydrogens, so they are saturated. If a chemical compound can have more hydrogens if a bond was broken, then it would be said to be unsaturated. So alkanes are saturated because each carbon holds the maximum number of hydrogens, typically two or three. Now, the general formula for alkanes is CNH2N plus 2. And this is very important. If one knows the number of carbons, then they can determine the chemical formula for that particular alkane. And the way this works is N represents the number of carbons. So let's say that we know a chemical compound is made up of seven carbons. Our chemical would be C7 because the N represents 7, H 2 times 7, which would be 14, plus 2, so H 16. And so that's how we can use that general formula to determine the uh, chemical formula of a compound. One additional example of this, let's say that we had 5 carbons. Then we, the N represents the number of carbons, so C5, H 2 times 5 plus 2 H 12 and so we will begin looking in our next video series how to name alkanes as they are the simplest structures to begin with in addition to having single bonds hydrocarbons can have double bonds and hydrocarbons that have double bonds are known as alkenes and so, because they have double bonds, they are considered unsaturated, and this is due to the fact that if the alkene was to break that double bond, it could hold additional hydrogen. Now, we can use the, the general formula for alkenes 
just like we did for our alkanes. The N still represents the number of carbon. So if we had 6 carbon, our formula would be C6, H2 times 6, or H12. And now we know the formula for that particular chemical compound. Now the similarities between alkenes and alkynes, um, the alkenes are going to be less dense than water, uh, they're going to be nonpolar, they're going to have those covalent bonds, they're not going to be soluble in water, so they are going to have very similar properties. If we have a hydrocarbon that has a triple bond present, that compound is known as an alkyne. Alkynes are unsaturated, and this is due to the fact that if the triple bond was broken, the carbons could hold additional hydrogen compounds. The general formula for an alkyne is CnH2n minus 2. Again, the N represents the number of carbons. So if we had an example of a, a carbon with a um, chemical compound with four carbons, we would have C4H2 times 4 is 8 minus 2. We would have uh, C4H6 as the chemical formula. Aromatic compounds is the fourth grouping of hydrocarbons that we will look at. Many of the aromatic substances are going to have very simple structures and only have a six carbon unit known as a C6H5. And arenes are going to be aromatic hydrocarbons. The most common aromatic uh, hydrocarbon that we will see will be benzene. This is what the benzene structure resembles. You'll notice that it is an enclosed ring. It's composed of six of our um, carbons. It has a 120 degree angle and each carbon is attached to a hydrogen. Now benzene is known to have a uh, characteristic called resonance and so we're going to show you what resonance means in these upcoming slides. Resonance was discovered in the 1860s and what that means is that we have this structure right here as a benzene and we have this structure right here as a benzene and you'll notice that we have double single double single double bonds same thing over here but you're going to notice that the double bonds are in opposite places now think of this as being like a car tire that's constantly in motion and that's what we have going on with these uh, double single bonds they're constantly moving in motion and so this would be correct but this would be equally correct and it's because both of these forms can exist uh, that we call this a resonance structure so both of these represent a benzene ring with that said we like to simplify things down in organic chemistry and so the shorthand method for writing the benzene ring would be this or this Again, you'll notice the difference is the location of the double single bonds is different on each one, and that's because the bonds are constantly in motion. So either one of these would be correct to draw. And because we know that the bonds are constantly in motion, we can also incorporate this diagram as well. And this circle is showing us the rotating double single bonds and showing that it's constantly in motion. So as we move forward in organic chemistry, you can draw your benzene ring this way, this way, or this way, and all three would be equally correct. So as we wrap up this video, resonance is what we use to describe the diagram of the benzene ring. And this is where we have two or more structures that are identical in their arrangement of atoms, but the arrangement of electrons is different. And so the true structure is a hybrid between the two diagrams. And so we can draw either one as being completely correct, or we can draw out our, our diagram with a circle in the middle to represent this hybrid state.